So this week, OpenAI have announced its new and latest model, GPT-40. O stands for Omni. And I find both the timing and the focus of the presentation extremely interesting. So let's talk about it. So let's start with the timing. The uh, OpenAI event has been scheduled exactly one day before Google's biggest tech presentation of the year, Google I.O. It was as if to say that whatever you see tomorrow, well, we've been here first. On top of that, um, OpenAI is rumored to sign a new deal with Apple, basically to replace Siri to be its AI provider. And with that, to join the competition with uh, Google Assistant and Alexa. Very interesting timing. What was actually presented? Well, GPT-40 improves a lot on its latency and its responsiveness. The voice generation, basically the voice mode of GPT-40 is amazing. And uh, it can generate text-to-speech like we've never seen before. It can do intonations, it can be playful, it can be even flirtatious to a certain degree. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Rocky. I'm doing great. How about you? I'm awesome. Listen, I got some huge news. Oh. Do tell. I'm all ears. Well, in a few minutes, I'm going to be interviewing at OpenAI. Have you heard of them? OpenAI? Huh? Sounds vaguely familiar. <laughs> Kidding, of course. <laughs> that's incredible, Rocky. What kind of interview? With that said, that's not the first time we see a free text text-to-speech model. In fact, Google have presented that back in 2018 with a duplex system that was able to do phone calls and order and do services for you. Happening out here. Hi, I'm calling to book a woman's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Sure, give me one second. Mm hmm. However, the new voice mod of GPT 4.0 is on a level of its own. It can understand the voice of the speaker and understands his emotional state. Is it worried? Is it concerned? Is it calm? Is it playful? Okay, yeah, so I'm gonna show you um, a selfie of what I look like, and then I'd like you to try to see what emotions I'm feeling based on how I'm looking. Sounds like a fun challenge. Go ahead and show me that selfie, and I'll put my emotional detective hat on. Ah, uh, there we go. It looks like you're feeling pretty happy and cheerful with a big smile and maybe even a touch of excitement. Whatever's going on, it seems like you're in a great mood. <laughs> Care to share the source of those good vibes? The Omni model is also a true multi-model model. It can understand what it hears, what it sees, and combine all of that together and kind of work with all of that information. So you can show it a, a photo or a picture or a sketch on a piece of paper and tell it what you want it to, to see or you draw a cow and say, how does it sound? And it will make the sound of a cow. So yes, it can even generate sound effects. Hey, my friend and I are learning Spanish and we're wondering if you could tell us the names of these objects in Spanish. Hola, por supuesto. The objects you're showing are una manzana and un plátano. What about this? That adorable stuffed animal is un oso de peluche in Spanish. Looks like it's ready for some hugs. The model is also twice faster than ever before and it has the lowest latency of ever before. Now, why do we care about latency? The importance of latency is when kind of text-to-speech or in dialogue with an AI is that the faster the model can respond, the more fluid or native the conversation is. So OpenAI have set to lower the latency as much as possible to make conversations fluid. OpenAI have also um, made the new model half the price, so much more accessible. And in fact, uh, the new GPT-4.0 model is available for free for everybody, even without registration. So you can go, just go to chatgpt.com and you have access to the new GPT-4.0 model absolutely for free. It's not fully deployed everywhere yet, so it might not be available right now in your country, but it will be available shortly within the next few weeks uh, to everybody. There is still the benefit of paying the subscription, and if you pay the subscription, you get a larger context window and uh, you get all the new features faster. That also means that uh, the GPTs are available to everybody now for free. I don't know what happened with the uh, GPT store that OpenAI have promised to be available in Q1 24. It's still not there, but I've made a video about how to make your own custom GPTs and how to monetize them even today. 
and you can check that video while here. Another really cool thing that uh, OpenAI did announce was a new desktop app that is available uh, for the Mac as well. And it kind of behaves like Spotlight. Uh, you just press a keyboard shortcut and you can talk to the new um, app, you can write to it, or you can show your screen and then it can help you or kind of explain anything you see on your screen. Okay, so I just shared some code with you. Could you give me a really brief one sentence description of what's going on in the code? This code fetches daily weather data for a specific location and time period, smooths the temperature data using a rolling average, annotates a significant weather event on the resulting plot, and then displays the plot with the average, minimum, and maximum temperatures over the year. Awesome, thanks so much. And in the code, there's this function foo. Can you describe to me what the plot would look like if I had versus didn't have this function? Sure. The function foo x y takes in a data frame x containing temperature data and a window size y for calculating the rolling mean. So that's really, really impressive. The biggest advantage and biggest advancement is the voice and how fluid it is and playful and all the different intonations. And like the new voice mode is amazing. Whatever's going on, it seems like you're in a great mood. <laughs> Care to share the source of those good vibes? Yeah, no, uh, the reason I'm in a really good mood is because we were doing a presentation showcasing how useful and amazing you are. <laughs> oh, stop it. You're making me blood. <laughs> and that brings me to my next point, focus. What did this presentation focus on? And I find that interesting, but also meaningful that the presentation is fully focused on being an assistant, on how ChatGPT moves towards becoming the best personal assistant possible. I think OpenAI's goal with this presentation was to signal to Apple and to the world essentially that yes, GPT is ready to be an assistant, that yes, GPT can be in the next Siri and can even be better than Google Assistant at its own game, even with Gemini. And more importantly, by opening GPT-4 to everybody for free, they also signal that um, the system is ready to scale. It can support the large size and large amount of users that being integrated in an iPhone would bring to it. Especially considering the earlier scalability issues that OpenAI had uh, with ChatGPT, we all remember how last year um, ChatGPT was crashing and not loading and all kind of, especially with a much simpler model with GPT 3.5. Now with 4.0, it's free for all. So what I find most interesting is what uh, OpenAI did not say at the presentation. And that's a lot. The demo of um, GPT 4.0, the website of GPT 4.0 includes huge amount of other capabilities that were not demo demoed in the presentation at all. For example, GPT-4.0 has been competing in LLM competitions for a while now under the funny name, I'm also a good GPT-2 chatbot. It's currently the best performing uh, LLM in all the arenas as of the recording of that video. And it beats everything else in all the synthetic um, benchmarks as well. But so many other things it can do that weren't even said are pretty amazing. Uh, for example, it can generate 3D models from images, not just generate images. It has become so amazingly good at generating text in um, synthetic media that it can even generate whole multi-line conversations in kind of text messages or scrolls or come up with a text and put it inside an image. OpenAI are so confident in uh, GPT-4O's ability to generate text that they showcase how it can generate its own new fonts. I mean, just half a year ago, you couldn't even generate a simple line of text. And now the model can just generate its own font with your description. It also can do style transfer. So basically like changing, taking a photo and changing its style, making a caricature out of it, which are things that uh, we needed to train Dreamboot or like stable diffusion in the past or use special style transfer algorithms. And now it's just built into the model. It can also be a truly a good personal assistant. It can generate meeting notes from a meeting just from voice, recognizing the different speakers and attributing each line to the right speaker. Hi, I'm Lillian, and today I want to do a small debate about between cats and dog. Uh, which one do you like? Uh, I like dog because it's a great companion to humans. It's uh, cute, it's loyal, 
and you can play outside with the dog. Um, how about you, Ola? Yeah, my name is Ola. I think cats are better because they're more affordable, they're more quiet, they're more independent, and they live longer. Interesting points. Sounds like we've got a classic dogs versus cats debate here. I can see the appeal of both. Dogs are super loyal and great companions. But cats have their own charm with their independence and low maintenance lifestyle. Who likes cats? It sounds like Ola is more of a cat person. And who likes dogs? Most of you? Lillian mentioned she likes dogs. Anyone else here at Team Dog? And <laughs> Because it's a really multi-model uh, model, it can combine all of these together. So you can dictate to it the title of a movie. It can take your photo and generate a movie poster to it. This capability is still not available to users, but it is part of the model itself. So I expect it to be available very shortly. I find the name of GPT-4 Omni, as if to say it's omnipotent, it's kind of godlike. It's very pretentious, it's very playful in a way. I wonder where they will take it next. Interestingly enough, this presentation has been done or hosted by Mira Murati, OpenAI's uh, CTO, and very noticeably has been absent from the presentation Ilya Sutskivel, who is the chief scientist, who later we found out have just departed OpenAI and is going to start something of his own. Back to the capabilities, a lot of those capabilities are yet to come. I think that a lot of these capabilities have been done by OpenAI in order to show all everybody who is not in the Google camp what is yet to come. With that said, the demo has been going for 26 minutes. Why was it so short and not, let's say, spend 45 minutes and show all the other capabilities that are part of this model that are even shown on the model's um, on page. Well, I bet that the idea is to keep it focused, to keep it highlighting only the assistant features to show this is the next generation of Siri and Google Assistant. This is how we will talk to our phones and computers in a few months. All right, I hope you enjoyed this commentary and uh, summary. If you have some ideas or something I missed in the presentation or anywhere around OpenAI's announcement, be sure to leave it in a comment below. I'm going to be reading all of those comments and responding to them. Super curious. And now it's time to go to watch Google's event. I'm super excited to see what Google has for us next. All right. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and see you next time. Bye.